women want to they want to relinquish the control but you have to show that you, you that you could drive if you if you're not showing exhibiting the fact that you could drive then why would they trust you to drive hey what's up square pimp brigade on this episode uh we talked to kerry cottage she's here and we discussed why women only date somebody who's better than them why you can only fix a relationship by fixing the man first can a woman be funny be the funny one in a relationship and what uh the difference between a work life balance and having living a better quality of life that's right yes thank you for joining us for the show and if you love the show you can uh, go support us over at patreon.com because that's where we do all the bonus content uh, you could subscribe and help support the show uh like uh, this bonus episode we do this week where we continue our conversation with uh with carrie and we discuss uh dealing with uh people's past traumas why white dudes love punching each other in the dick and uh and if we can uh if we can hook carrie up on a date and plus uh can a woman date a young man? Does that work in relationships? And uh, that's where you can support us over at patreon.com slash manschool202. Another way you can support us if you'd like is uh, we do relationship consultations. If you need a consultation to help your relationship out, you can find me via email, advicefromharry at gmail.com, and I can send you the uh, the rates and, uh, and how we can set up any help for your relationship. And if you want to reach Dante, how can they reach you for a relationship consultation? DanteNero.com. Click on consult. You get it in. All right. Enjoy the rest of the show, guys. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The Sexual Revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Now, I know I've said that 500 times before, but this time, I mean it. Um, because we have a special show with a special guest. Um, but first and foremost, my boy, my partner in crime. What up, Harry? You ready to rock and roll? I'm absolutely ready to rock and roll. I'm, I was look born a, ready. You look a little tired. You all right? You good? I mean, listen, I'm tired from trying to... It's, it's hard being great, bro. It's exhausting. <laughs> it's not it easy. Nobody tells you about that, but it's exhausting. I mean, I'm living a great life, but I am tired. You okay? Fair yeah, enough. yeah. I am tired. Yeah, it's a lot of balance. You want to do everything and do it right. It takes a lot of work. It does. Being being, being mediocre is easy. Yeah, it it, it, it comes easy. Uh, let me introduce our guest. Um, I love this girl to death. Uh, Brooklyn in the building, baby. Uh, I'm fucking hilarious. Uh, extremely talented. Uh, showrunner. Uh. Uh, one of the stars on uh, Flatbush Misdemeanors. Good, good, give it up for my girl Carrie Cottage, y'all. Give it up for Carrie. Hey. What up, baby? Hey. Carrie. What's hey. going on, baby? You good? What's up? I'm great. I'm so happy to be here too. You look fantastic, always. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. The, uh, I, and uh, without without being creepy, probably probably the best the best body in the fucking business right now. <laughs> without being creepy. <laughs> without being creepy. But just probably the best. Objectively I mean, a man with eyes. I respect yeah, you. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, it's so good to see you. I miss you. I mean, you and Carrie used to work at stand up heavily. Um, and, uh, you know, I haven't been up there much either. Not as much as I used to be. It's, you know, bugging out but um so so dope so much success um how are you i am great i really am great for a while i felt guilty about saying that in the pandemic because you know everybody's like damn you know happy to be alive i'm also happy to be alive but i'm like thriving so i've never been better yeah yeah <laughs> so, some people go yo covid best time of my life <laughs> I, yep. I mean, I was also lucky because, uh, you know, I had the baby during COVID. So I was, I had so much time with him. And that's, you know, that's where we usually get all our trauma from, <laughs> right. from not being around your kids at that time, you know? Yeah. I think that's one of the great things that came out of the pandemic. Like if you like your family, yeah. and you fuck with your family and you got to spend extra time with them. And it was good because you spent so much time being busy and ripping and running and making excuses that I enjoyed the quality time. Yeah. Also, if you don't like your family, you really realize why you didn't like them. And then you could just prune. This is my new shit. I'm pruning people out of my life 
just clip, clip, clip. Just oh, make, yeah. you know, I, I'm not, I'm not dealing with time is the commodity and I'm not wasting it on anybody that's not moving my life forward. Period. You know, it's so funny. I During the pandemic, I thought like, you know, people were like, it's a chance for people to come back into your life and do a lot. I didn't like all that. I was <laughs> like, I was just like, I want you to treat me how you treated me when you thought we had all the time left in the world. Like yeah. my critical team is my critical team. And so yeah, yeah. Though, there's a reason we weren't friends. Stay where you are. It's fine. I'm good. I, fe I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. Yeah. I mean, because it, it's it's interesting. It's just it's interesting when you when you know, when people recognize. But I mean, people always do what they want to do. They, they always do what they want to do anyway. And, mm -hmm. and and when agency is watching, that's when, you know, people adjust their behavior because somebody's watching. But I, I always like giving people no pressure at all so you can see the true essence of who they are in the first place. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, how's love life? How's it going? Got a man? Got, don't have a man? What's up? Are you just making too much money? You don't want to share it with nobody. <laughs> None of those are true. I am single. Uh, I'm not, I don't, I'm now in the real world because the apps, I'm not about the apps life. I cannot do the app at all. And so why not? What's going on with the apps? What's what, what, what was, what was your experience with the apps that made you, uh, just, uh, vow to never use them again? I just feel like they made me sadder. It felt hmm. like, it felt like the, it felt like the circumstances were more dire on the app. Like the more I swiped. The more I was just like, oh, I'll never find anyone for me. <laughs> like he can't be here. <laughs> and so I've just, it's just been tough. It's just been, I'm not a texter. People uh -huh. can't spell. They're not great communicators anyway. <laughs> they want to hello you and hi you to death. They lack conversation. If you're text messaging, the way to keep a conversation going is I say something, then you follow up, then you add a question, but yeah. I'm not stuck here looking. So like, what are we even doing? <laughs> it's just a lot. It's just a lot. It's just a lot. <laughs> You know what's funny about that? It's like, um, it, it's I. You know what? I, you know me. I, I don't really bite my tongue much. Uh, she's like, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so if, if I've been on dates and stuff where that's the conversation, and I'll just, I'll, I'll be like, yo, you don't, you don't want to be here because we could just not, we could just not do this. Like, is he? And then, oh no, 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 no. But it's like, yo, I'm, I'm work with me. Like yeah. we're trying to get, we're trying to. And, and I'm I'm a lot of guys that I'm I do guys and men, men and women that I'm counseling. Something that I say over and over again is I don't I'm not I don't do awkward. Me neither. Like, Good for you. Uh, why why do we like if you don't like me if you don't because you know, baby I could be doing <laughs> something else with somebody else or by myself. Yeah yeah <laughs> and, and and the awkward is. And I get it if somebody is like sometimes some people will be so especially because if, if if I don't know if you dated any guys who knew you like saw you on TV and then did you date any guys like that? No, this is why it's uncomfortable, too, because I was in like an eight year relationship. That was the span of my comedy career. Like he oh, came. Oh, really? Like my yeah. Like so when I started, I was with a guy. And so we recently broke up. And now trying to be who I am now is weird for them, not for me. I feel now, like wait, wait, you were you when we was doing stand up, you was with this guy or no? Okay, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I keep a very private, low profile. Mm. I've been with some bitches that just pop up, married and pregnant. You didn't even know I was in a whole situation. <laughs> <laughs> did it? And it did it? What was the breakup? What was the perspective of the breakup? Um, we were like, we just knew that we weren't. I knew it just wasn't going to work. We were not compatible. We tried. Um, it was a great love. But just because you love someone doesn't mean that you need to be together. Yeah. yeah. Was this uh, before, during the pandemic, post pandemic? We broke up pre pandemic. Pre oh, right before. Right before the pandemic. Oh, OK. So you wow. can't, it's not even that. You're like, geez, this is before I had to stay in a room with you. I knew that we're done <laughs> before we were trapped 24 hours. I already knew. So you kind of dodged a bullet. At least you were free of that. 
Oh, oh, but I know, I know, Harry, I know some people that have like were wanted to break up and just didn't want to be alone. So they the pandemic, yeah. stuck it out through the pandemic and then they broke out after broke up after the pandemic, you know, I like, think that just... seems torturous to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but it would seem it, for me to be stuck with somebody that you don't love and to have to be in the house. I'd rather be alone. Yeah, yeah. I love being alone. Yeah, I'm I'm tired of Harry and his loving relationships. Makes oh, me geez. sick. Sorry, bud. Fuck Are you, you. In a relationship right now. Sorry. Yeah, I'm in a very loving relationship right now. Yeah, uh, and it's it, it's thanks to Dante, but I guess he's tired. He's he's tired of watching my love blossom. He's <laughs> sick of it. It's disgusting him. How well it's going? Um, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. It's 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 yeah. It's a, I'm in a good place now with it. Yeah, but I mean. I, I feel for anybody who's stuck in a relationship with somebody that they don't want to be with. That it's seems torturous. Stuck, though. That's the whole thing. It's mm. like why every day we have choices. And so you're making a choice to be stuck. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you inside the house or there's some like physical thing, like just leave. Choose yourself. Just leave. Yeah. Just leave. I, I always I always say I feel sorry for I always feel sorry for um dope women very difficult situation like when you're a woman and you're progressive and artistic and um it it, it because what i i have this theory I, th that women only women only date guys who they think are better than them and uh, and better is a is a relative perspective but as soon as you realize that you're better than the dude that you're with women are out because there's there's no attraction to that you know it's just like if i got if i got this or if this is who i am every, and this is all that i can do for me if you can't elevate me then why am i like why am i attracted to you do you know what i'm saying what do you think yeah i think i wouldn't use the word better but you're right that it is subjective because for me it's about like who i can learn from Right. right. Like, can I learn anything from you? Can I grow from you? Like, you're right. And can you elevate me in some ways? I think sometimes when you are a successful woman or this is perception of how well you're doing financially, that better is often reduced to just like money. Like he got to have more money than me. And that's mm -hmm. not necessarily where I am. You just need to be able to amplify my situation in some way. In a lot of ways for me, it's emotionally money. You know, I don't I'm not taking care of you. Money is important. Right, right. To me, I want to learn from you and be yeah. inspired. Well, I mean, you know, like it's, it's 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 women find a man sexy who's smarter than them and wiser and and um more insightful and which I mean that's kind of why I use better and I don't necessarily mean financially. It's yeah. just it which is which is because and I think it's perspectively the way uh male attraction happens and the way female attraction happens so if a woman is doper than the guy a lot of times he's intimidated which is is yeah look, look at that face go ahead let it out baby let it out it's just so annoying that word i'll let you finish but no no i'm because I'm, there was a there was a, i wanted this is about you i, I talk yeah. on this motherfucker all day <laughs> Yeah, because like whenever they say that a woman is intimidating, really, it's a reflection of your insecurity. But the way that it's labeled, it's like it's a it's a problem with the woman. She's too something else when it's just you lack something. And so yeah. what you see in me is just a daily reminder of what it is that you don't measure up to. That's yeah. a you problem. That's not a me problem, sir. Yeah, I, it's a weird thing because even when we when Harry and I, you know, when we started doing the show, you know, our, you know, my whole intention was to make relationships better, to make people better, to make. And that was always the intention. But you can't really I've always said this. You can't really fix the relationship from the woman's perspective. You can only fix it from the man's perspective. So if the relationship doesn't work, I mean, guys get upset when I say this, but I don't really care. But it, if if the relationship doesn't work, it's our fault. Now, it may be our fault on perception, on, on, on purpose, but what, what I mean is if you, you ever see, like, you don't ever get a girl and a girlfriend of yours and you, she, maybe she's dating a, a nice guy, right? Uh -huh. And you go, he's nice, girl. Give him a chance. You ever say that? Like, 
Oh, he's oh, but he's so he's such a good guy. Give him a I've chance. Okay, but you know you. I mean, you. you right. <laughs> I've heard it said. I know what you mean. I've right, never right. said that. <laughs> what what they're saying in essence is, um, you are, you are whatever it is. You are confident or aggressive or or ambitious or uh, what you need to do is be less of who you are to accommodate his weakness to mm -hmm. give him a chance. Now, anytime I hear that and a guy. Uh, it's, it's some I like you might as well you know you the guy might as well put a gun to his head because it's already over because what she's what she has to do is she's accommodating your inadequacies and and uh, because a girl oh he's a nice guy da, 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 da. but um it it you can't be you 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 have to you have to fix it from the guy's perspective in the fact that if he's not ambitious if he's not successful if he's not um, discipline if he's not those things and because he doesn't have a certain level of success that makes her go wow this guy is dope you can't ask her to make an emo because what you're asking her to do is make a cognitive decision about an emotional uh, 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 an emotional uh, uh, an emotion a feeling an emotional feeling about because attraction is is you know I always say women don't know what they want their pussy does and I'm mean, like it's a it's an it's a feeling as opposed to, you know, a list. I want a guy to this, 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 because you could have a guy that could hold it at and you go, eh, I just, you know, I'm just not feeling him. Yeah, I think it depends. You said a lot that, um, that I liked actually, but I also think that it's about, one, I think it's about accountability. So I don't necessarily agree that if there's something wrong in the relationship, it's the onus is like on the guy. It's like women, we lie to ourselves all the time. Sure. All the time we lie to ourselves about like, oh, we make those little concessions or we, we ignore the red flags. Right. And so sometimes I think it's like when we're making this list, we have to be honest about the things even on this list. Right. And sometimes like emotional maturity doesn't make it on the list. A man who's committed to like being better, that's not on the list. And right. sometimes those are the things when you talk about the feeling, those are the little combinations of like, yeah, he looks good. Yeah, he mm -hmm. smells good. He's charming. He ha he has a certain like way that he carries himself, but he's also really smart and really insightful. And mm -hmm. I like his perspective and the way that he says things. And that's what makes my pussy wet. You mm -hmm. know, I think sometimes it just depends on like how accurate are you being with the. So list. what what part of that you think gets left behind, or mm -hmm. or not not considered? Um when a woman is talking about the list of things that yeah, she yeah, likes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes it's superficial. It's always like, you know, we see all these like Kevin Samuel videos or all these things and it's like, does a man provide? What does what does he bring to the table? What does a woman bring to the table? But it's always some like superficial shit. So I think that those are the things that get left out, like the actual emotional qualities, like emotional intelligence, communication. Does the nigga have mommy issues and that's why mm -hmm. he's angry at you? Like, what are we actually unpacking aside from does he have a big dick? Does he make money? Does he look good? Right, right. Yeah, and that's those. Yeah, those are a lot of superficial things, and then you get lost. But we, because when you bring up Kevin Samuels, our Lord and Savior, Kevin Samuels, uh, no, no name above that name. Um, the high value piece. The high, uh, may, may, <laughs> that's very funny. May he rest in high value piece. Uh, when you when you bring that up, there were those people who'd call in, and this is why I want a high value man. We go well. What is high value? And it never was a conversation about how good they were as a person. It was about financials i want him to be six foot tall i want him to be uh good looking be able to take care of me and you're right you you get lost in those things you set those up and that's not a val valuable list because when you get a guy who is that who is financially great who is good looking and then he fucks around on you well i guess you didn't put that on your list you know yeah. you didn't vet that out and those are things that are equally as important yeah you're right well, if, even if you, you, you know, we, we've talked about this a few times, my Lord and Savior, Kevin Sanders. One of the things is it's also it's also kind of a setup in terms of you're setting the parameters about, OK, this is this is the highest like high value man over one hundred thousand dollars a year or more and this and that and the other. 
and but you're, you're setting the parameters saying this is what the it's almost like set, setting up the question and was like um if i ask you if i ask a guy how um do you still beat your wife right the <laughs> presupposed understanding is that you you, used to beat you, your wife. You beat it. You have been beating her. Do I just want to know presently? Do you still beat your wife? And so when you say high value man, it's like okay, this is high value man. Then the assumption is what he dis, what he what he prescribes as high value. When it, it when the reality is is most most of the women who come on there uh, have they they've already gave up the gooch to dudes before on a different different parameters they've 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 laid with dudes who weren't over 100 and a lot of times what that wasn't even the consideration so now you go okay this is the this is the parameters we're operating in and so naturally people who are not paying attention and i gonna say wait a minute wait a minute that's not necessarily what high value is to me you know nobody stops and begs the question so yeah. you, one of the things that we you know that and because i'm I, I find that i'm evolving still and as i'm evolving um the show evolves and so you know i realize that how important truth is just honesty i mean what the principles of the show is 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 ace which is authenticity credibility and empathy right so um being truthful, probably one of the most valuable things you could, you know, I, I think that we we overlook that. But if you got a guy with cum gutters in a six pack, yeah, you want to fuck him. But if he's dishonest, but if he going to fuck your sister, then it, 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 it don't it don't matter how good he looked, you know, or if he come home and he, how about if he fucks your brother? Right. You know, like it's, it's, you're literally talking about these are parameters that we're not. Even, secondly, the credibility. Look, I say what I mean. I mean what I say. And if I say I'm going to do something, I do it. S super that's important. That's on anybody's list, like yeah. reliable man yeah. of his word. Yeah. Not on anybody's <laughs> list. It's never on the list. And and em empathy, the, the empathy of it is I, I understand that you are going through some things that I may not understand and my ability to see it from your perspective of what you're going on. I did a, like, you know, I do the consultation. I was talking to a guy today um, and the guy was saying to me, I was saying to him that, um, you know, we don't, we don't, as guys, we don't consider that every time a girl goes out with us, right? She has to decide whether or not you might not you may not you may rape her like you may kill her you may rape like like, like this is a consideration that women have to have it that, like they're looking for these red flags okay well, i mean sure we get past that but you're always when that red flag is like yo this dude might be violent or he might be crazy or uh, guys never have to consider whether or not they're going to get raped on a date you know most of them want to get raped on a date <laughs> They might have to consider if they're gonna get robbed if they go see the chick in the projects, you know, like back in yeah, the day. Yeah, the, the setup. See, the, <laughs> so you can set up. That, that carry that ghetto. That you can take the girl out the ghetto. <laughs> I never had those problems. I'm just saying I've been told. But we know. We know. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I, I had a cousin that you took a good. That had a dude take her to 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 Vegas and then and her man set yeah it was a whole other thing set the dude up and but you know what I'm saying but but I'm saying as a whole that's not something that we're concerned about and that's a that is a prevalent concern about with women all the time is their personal safety you don't go someplace because make misrepresenting that making that mistake is something that you can't it's not easy to come back from and and a lot of people don't come back from that at all you know so that as a consideration in itself and so i was saying to this dude that you know you you if you don't have that empathy to see where this woman is coming from what her concerns are like i, I you're not even you can't even start to create a relationship overall and and then the other thing that i've, I've been bouncing around i'm i've been bouncing around in my head is um uh the um uh, you know, um, like, uh, I'm trying to put it in, in words, like, um, 
I'm, I'm lost for words for a minute. Disrupted me. But um, uh, in regards to what, buddy? Um, empathy, women's safety, women's safety, empathy, but also um, the fact that trauma, the the our personal trauma, trauma that we've gone through on our own and that we're carrying and it hasn't been dealt with. I mean, and I, you know, you know, I, I, I especially. I don't know if I say, yeah, I can say, especially black people and black relationships. Do you know the racial trauma that we go through and the constant microaggressions that we go through on a day to day basis? You know, you operating in this, you know, like you you was just saying how congratulations on running the show, you doing show running and, and getting into the behind the scenes. I, I, and I was, I was going to ask you when you said that, are you going to direct you thinking about directing too and st- doing that stuff, too? I'm not sure. I'm open to whatever the path leads me. I'm mm-hmm. like, whatever. I'm trying anything. But just just being a being a, a black woman, and and operating in the spaces as we see, and you know, it's so volatile now. But it's always been volatile. But I mean, this is a trauma that we we go through. We black folks have gone through in this country from the inception of this, uh, in the inception of the country. And we we have not we haven't even had a, a a a breather for it. It's not even like it's okay. We're we, there's no apology. There's no reparations. There's no any of that. And you're dealing with this trauma. And I and not to speak of that in terms of you know. I mean, if you were talking about if if I was a Jewish man and I was talking about Holocaust and everybody understands the trauma of that and they talk about the 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 trauma that we get through our uh, through our genes and through culture all the time and and so now you're in a relationship trying to operate as if you haven't gone through trauma in your own life on a day-to-day basis and now you're trying to operate well let's just go out on a date as if there's not all these other things that trigger you and 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 not to take away from it because harry harry's dad is that harry's immigrant is an immigrant dude right his mm. pop is a armenian and you know those immigrant i just went to get my car fixed right yeah and this is i go to a chinese mechanic right and his father is work 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 save money don't buy nothing work 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 make life stack away save 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 so he has a son that i was dealing with and the son just left the I like I left the business because it's just there's nothing he could do that's good enough, right? This the, the father's always yelling and screaming. Nothing even when he does everything right, it's not it's not good enough. He's you're dealing with this trauma, and then whether you realize or not, everything affects everything else. So now how does he, you know, how do you get into a relationship when you're you're dealing with the you know, the disappointment of your father, which is the person that you, you you know, when we're younger, we're trying to, you know, live up to whatever expectations they they have. And we're carrying that, which seems like something that's so like, what does that have to do with me and my man and my relationship or me and my woman in a relationship? It's, but it's this validation that we're not getting and we're taking this trauma into relationships on every level, family, friends, yeah. and especially intimate relationships you know and and well, then those things all impact everything in your past impacts your current relationship i've had relationships in the past where i've had girls who have uh who have trust issues abandonment issues because her family abandoned her all the time so that in turn played into a jealousy issue where i couldn't see friends because if it wasn't if she wasn't involved she's jealous right that those are things if she has a terrible relationship with her father uh, that's another thing that impacts how she deals with you or how uh, how she views you or, or selfishness. You know, I've been in relationships where and I consider myself a very unselfish person. I always think of my partner first. And so if somebody's – but because they dealt with selfish up people in their upbringing, now they try to find out like the they they view it through a lens of – what are you doing that's selfish and why are you doing that selfishly? You have to deal with all those traumas that the other person has, just like they have to deal with all your traumas. I think that ultimately everything you're saying is true. We all have our own traumas, everyone. Yeah. And at a certain point, you are responsible for your traumas. No doubt. And you are responsible for working through your shit 
And you have to like sit back and really be introspective and being like, oh, is is he is he really doing something for me to be mistrustful? Or is this my daddy issue speaking? Is this my fear of something? And you have to like everyone has to do the work on them, their individual selves so mm-hmm. that you can be a be- better as a peer. Because if not, yeah. like there's only so much work you can do for so- to assuage somebody else's insecurities. Like, bitch, I'm not cheating. And you're mm. making it up. And if you want to be with me, you're going to have to do something about that. Because yeah. my, you already got my password. You know I'm, where I am. What, yeah. Like, what am I to do? You can't. There's only so much you can I do. completely agree with that. The only thing that you deal with, though, is sometimes that person isn't aware that they're doing it or where it comes from. And sometimes you discover that as a couple. And so there's a level of patience sometimes you have to have. You know, there's you, you can't get if, if they're you, important enough, if they're important yeah, enough, like, if they deserve it, it enough. A lot. Go to therapy like I, I, without I a doubt for this. This is above my. <laughs> OK, but I'll t- all right. But I'll say yeah. this, Carrie. The thing with, from a man's perspective is when you're arguing with somebody, when you're arguing with a woman, especially sometimes you run into a thing where you go, none of this makes sense. This does not make sense. But you have to treat and respect her emotions. It's very strange because sometimes the emotions are not based in reality at all as far as an argument goes. And you have to get to the bottom of that. And that can become difficult because that person isn't intentionally being an asshole. They're not intentionally fighting with you. But they are going through something where even they don't understand it. So it's a weird balance that kind of from a guy's perspective, you have to deal with that and figure it out. I've never been in a relationship where some of that hasn't happened, like to some extent, you know. Where you have to play detective and figure out, like, what is the reality of this? How much am I responsible? How much, how much do I have to fix? And how much of this is completely on the other person? But when you're in the midst of it, that person is just—it's all emotions, and there is no, there is no logic in that that moment. So the same—I guess what I'm saying in, in the—I'm being long-winded about this. The same mentality and per, uh, perspective that a woman has when she is justified is also the same tools that she is using when she, when it's not justified at all, if that makes right. sense. Right, that makes sense. Yeah. And that's everyone. That's people, yeah. right. right? It's just like sometimes we're ruled by emotions and, you know, perception is reality. So if I feel that this is what's happening, my brain mm-hmm. tells me this is actually what's happening. Right. And so you're right when you're in a relationship with somebody and they do some shit and no one realizes what it is and... You do have to do some detective work. And then sometimes you may never be able to convince them that this is why it's happening. Mm-hmm. Your detective work leads you to believe, oh, this shit ain't about me at all. So right. every time she go off on this or mm. he goes off right. on this, I realize this is not a me thing. I'm going to be supportive. And then maybe we could find another way to work through it or it'll be water under the bridge or I won't feed into it and make it a bigger thing because I know Absolutely. what it's not about. Right, and then right, right. it becomes so big that it's a deal breaker. Then be- that's why it's called a deal breaker. I yeah, can't yeah. do this anymore. Right, right. Yeah. Well, but I mean, how sexy is it if you're with a dude and you are triggered and he goes, listen, you know, listen, just calm. Here's, here's what's going on. I love you and I have no reason to cheat on you. And I'm, I'm an open book, but I am also not going to be triggered and feed into this. But I want you to understand that I love you and I and you are important to me and us working this work matters to me but understand this i'm not going to take this abuse and mm-hmm. i won't continue and then but that's makes your that's pussy hot. wet you, you know that that gets your I pussy love, wet. i love a good boundary honey yeah. <laughs> well, like, see, what we're not going to do is and <laughs> really like, oh look at him look at him go <laughs> look, look at him that's go hot. we want a man who can lead too like there's yes. so much of the conversation about women being submissive and all this other shit. Again, these are more men's problem than women's problem. Cause you ain't never had to teach followers how to follow. That's never been it. There's tons of courses on leadership, on management, because that shit takes skill, but anybody can follow the right person. And so it's just like, if somebody has a problem being submissive, if that's what you require, it's because you're not a great leader. It's just that. I agree. Or, or you, or you're not, you're not a leader that, uh, you're not a leader that understands that this person is, is not right for this job. Like yeah. that, that could be the case. Yeah, I, yeah, I ain't doing that. Bad leader, because you got to yeah. know who, 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 who's signing yeah, up. Yeah, that is, 
<laughs> That's the definition of a bad leader that you you are incompetent for. The, I've hired somebody who's incompetent for this job. Doesn't have the emotional acuity to 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 be in this position. But I, I but but the only thing I would push back on is your ability to set those boundaries is the thing that women find attractive by a man. That that at at and and it's not all the time, but his immovability about something that's unreasonable is sexy like women find that sexy so i i say women will i've never met a woman who didn't want a strong man the problem is you gotta you, you know it's like you ever get in, in a in the in a car in an uber car and the guy can't drive like he can't he he's having a problem pulling and you like now you watching everything you're scrutinizing everything he does because he didn't make you feel comfortable in the first place and it's the same token you know you trying to make that flight and you you jump in an uber and the dude is dipping it and you like oh this motherfuckers you know five stars because you you women want to they want to relinquish the control but you have to show that you you that you could drive if you if you're not showing exhibiting the fact that you could drive then why would they trust you to drive? I mean, I think that's yeah. that's the problem. And 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 I mean, it, I mean, you could also have a situation where somebody just doesn't have like I find this about the women in my family. Just not just my my cousins and every like Nero women is a, they are a problem. Like you you got to be a strong man. And the and the problem is you also have to not you have to be, in order to deal with my women in my family you also have to be unaffected by the by the 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 antics the the carnival like so the yelling and listen, listen uh don't ever i, I i've had um <laughs> we uh, you know we used to have a um we used, we used to have this chick mara that was on the show with her oh, she Jesus, was the co-host yeah. and the reason why she's not on the show is because she hung up the phone on me like we were having a discussion and she she just banged the phone on me. And that was the last time we ever spoke. Well, no, the second to last time we ever spoke. Like we never spoke. Like she had, I don't know, how many years did she do the show, Harry? Probably at least five. Five four, years. Four years. And, and we we were, something happened and she was on, and, and she was out of her mind anyway. It was always some crazy shit. She was shit, crazy but, the whole time, yeah. Yeah, she was crazy. But but one of the things that I've always made clear about was that I'm not, I'm just not going to have somebody disrespect me. And if you hang up the phone on me, you must never want to talk to me again, right? Period. So she banged the phone on me and I didn't say nothing. I called up the web designer. I had her removed from the website. <laughs> Like that night, I was like, I need this taken off. I need the passwords changed. And uh, and so she was angry and it was like, I'm, I'm, I'm mad. And then Monday, because every time we would have a disagreement or a little tiff or something like that, she wouldn't like she was supposed to be doing the social media and stuff. And she would always be slacking. And then we would have a fight. And then when she well, not a fight, but a disagreement that following week, she would be like, oh, I'm going to get back on it. Now she's posting and, you know, trying to do what she's doing. And she went in and she called me up and she goes, um, did you take did you change the passwords and take me up to social? I go, absolutely. <laughs> and, she, and she goes, uh, so I'm um, you're kicking me off the show. I go, absolutely. You, kicked and, off, you hung up on me. And that was the, I didn't even say that. I just that was the, and that is literally the last time I spoke to her after. And I and I think that the, the problem is you have to, and I've said this before a hundred times. Relationships are really simple. You got to know what your non-negotiables are and then never negotiate them. <laughs> so if they are non-negotiable and then you negotiate that now, don't get me wrong. If she had called me up apologizing and said, I, I just did this, da 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 I, we could have had a conversation, but she asked me direct questions. I asked those, answered those correct. So I'm not going, I'm not going to talk to somebody who doesn't want to talk. You're, you know, I think we, we, and, and I think sometimes we, we've gotten to this point where, you know, as men are like, you need to communicate more. You need to, and then, and women, y'all look at us like, ugh. What a pussy. Like, like he, my feelings, and I'm not saying you can't be empathetic. And, but if you're, if you're acting all soft, it's like, how does she feel? 
How does she feel empowered by the fact that you can't even make a clear decision, especially when it's somebody like you who's making moves and doing things for yourself? Like weakness is so unattractive because it, it, it's not prevalent in your own life. You know, so a weak dude is like, ugh, you know, you just it's like, ugh, this is disgusting. Um, and, and so I, I think as much as we, you know, people talk about discussing things and having conversations, but you got to have conversations in the context of when people want to communicate good faith discussions, as opposed to I'm going to say what I got to say. And I got this going on in the back of my I, I don't know if I'm explaining it right, but I, I, I think actions you you hang up the phone on me we i'm removing you not mm -hmm. only am i saying i'm removing you but you you went to log in and it's you can't get in so at least if nothing else you know that i'm serious about what my boundaries are um now if you want if you if you i mean because i'm not unreasonable that we can make mistakes we all make mistakes we all you know two things that we'll always have to do as human beings is one give forgiveness and to ask for forgiveness those that's part of us being human beings is that we we are error, we make errors um the difference is making an error that is the constitution of who you are or making an error because of uh the circumstances gave me a blind spot that i didn't see you know i i, I couldn't really see what was going on you know mm -hmm. um I really feel, I really feel, because my, my sisters are very strong women, and they they chew niggas up and eat them, chew them up and spit them out. And it's like, the problem is when you're talking about somebody who's very aware of themselves and very, it, it, you know, it's bad enough when, you, when you're when a woman and you ain't shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you get your shit together, it's, you know, I mean, the standard is so high. You feel what I'm saying? I feel you. Yeah. Okay, Carrie, what is it now? You're, you're off the apps and stuff. What are how are you approaching dating now? What's the plan? I'm just doing the things that I enjoy and like putting myself in the places that I like where like minded people will be. So I'm big on financial literacy now. I go to a lot of like financial literacy seminars and workshops. I go to fundraisers that are community based because I would love to meet a man that is community minded in some way. So I go to galas where people that black upwardly mobile service. men that care about service, things where people that I have more in common with would be so that because even being on the apps, what I realized, too, is it's tough being a, a stand up comedian. And what I learned is that like dudes on the app be like, oh, I want a girl with a sense of humor. And I quickly learned it's because they want me to laugh at their jokes. So oh, that's what mm -hmm. they think. That's, that's what they what, think comedians are. A sense of humor, not somebody who's funny. Right. They want yeah, someone yeah, yeah, yeah. who they can make their jokes about. And so I realized that I think this is my hypothesis that men, especially if they aren't traditionally good looking or have money or all these other things, how they get women from middle school and up is their personality, their charm. Does she laugh at my jokes? Oh, she laugh at my jokes. That means she likes me. I have an in now. And so when you're in your thirties now, you meet a chick that they be like, oh, you a, com you a comedian, comedian, what kind? Stand up. I'm, oh, so you, I'm funny. I'm, I'm hilarious. They're like, you don't do nothing else. I don't do nothing else. I make my money, earn my living by being funny. They mm. don't know what to do at all. Mm. And then also as a comic, you know that making somebody laugh is very powerful. Yeah. And so like, I be having grown men giggling. I've had men giggling on dates and be like, no, no, when we're together, you're not the comedian. I'm the comedian. And right. that's the end of the day. Wait, you know? guys, guys feel that way or they that's stop you, you from being I had funny? A, guy, a guy be like this. You, this is too much when we're together. I'm the funny one. And so when we talk about little when we talk about like little adjustments that women make to appear more feminine or to be softer. It, those are some of the things it's like damn do i have to be less funny no it's weird it's weird no, that, that was that was said to you like that was said to me by a whole human man I was like, like okay give me give me the setup I, i'm the setup, we were on a bar we were at a bar 
he was a police officer, which I should have known. I never would date a police officer, mm. but I was like, he's cute. Whatever. Let me. Mm. And he, we were having a great time. He's laughing. He's having the best time. And then he's like, no, when we're together, I'm the comedian, not you. And I'm like, so what am I? Like, you're not even going to give me a job. What if, What then do I do now? So and what was it, what was his response? I mean, well, I'm, I'm, I'm this is. I don't even, it this was like blows my mind that somebody would even say this, and I'm, I'm and I know you, Gary. So, what was your response? Like, I don't even remember what my <laughs> response was. It like the date was over. He ceased to exist to me at that moment. I think re- Carrie's I response was, was internal, going, ah, noted, like <laughs> just noted. I, said that out loud, I don't, like, yeah. What are you? We're doing role playing. What is this like Freaky Friday? It's so bizarre. It's like a job evaluation where you, you know, you have to finish, you know, one of those things where, I mean, a date is a job evaluation. So she's already done and they're still, they still got like a third of the date to go. She's like, yep, well, you will not be getting a call back. This is yeah. it. That I think that's what she did. Yeah. That, I would that, assume. I don't know that he called me back either, though. I'm pretty sure it was mutual. Mm. Like he had a great time. And he felt like he had no power. Like, you know, laughter is uncontrollable. And so mm. you just doing all this. You can't be the you had a different plan for the night. I got you right. giggling your you kicking your feet up. You're feeling glee now. And so uh, he was not here for it. Which is fine. It, He's not the guy for me, but yeah. Wow, that is man, I, I feel sorry for women. I I'm, really not su- feel- I'm not surprised by that, that uh, dudes are just, yeah, but to, uh, you know, can't it handle that surprise you for somebody to act, know that you're a stand-up comedian and to, to act like the audacity no, because, to verbalize No, because that. I've already, I guess I've already heard enough women, female comedians tell me what they receive. And the, the, the general interaction is, are you a stand-up comedian? This is usually via dating apps. Are you a stand-up comedian? Yes, I am. And then their response is usually, my friends say uh, I'm funny that I should do stand-up. Yeah, it's either that. Yeah. I don't even put that in my profile. I put nothing comedy related in my profile. They either turn into fans. They mm-hmm. want to talk about comedy. They want to try their bits out on you. Um, yeah, it's always, it's always a weird reaction. I don't even bring dudes that I'm dating to shows. Like, unless we're really serious, I don't want you to see me do stand-up. I don't mm-hmm. want you to see it. It's just, I don't even talk about work anymore. Like, why is like, that? Because is it because why? Well, let me ask you why. Why don't you expose? Like, why don't you expose that? Because it creates this weird dynamic, and I guess the guy that's for me ultimately this won't be won't have wrong, right exactly. But like, I'm trying to help you, sir. So let me just <laughs> because when I talk about my job in any aspect, it's like there's assumptions on how much money I have or how much money I'm making. People see you on TV. They think that, oh, so there's that whole thing. Then they like, then they turn into fans sometimes where they're just like, do you know this guy? Do you know this thing? And then it's just like, I'm so much more than my job. And so it's, if it's something that you're gonna be hung up on, then you know, it, it, th- there's more important things to me than my work. And I think before the pandemic, I defined myself a lot by my work. Like, what do you, who are, like, before the pandemic, it's what do you do? And now I'm like, who are you? You know, like, tell me who you are. Don't tell me what you do. I care what you do, but like, I'm more than a comedian. I'm more than a writer. I'm more than all of that shit. So get to know all of that. More more. than an actress. You better start saying it. More than an actress. I want to hear you say it. More than a bad bitch. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? Because it's funny because I, um, you know, I have been acting for years and, 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 you know, I had a pretty decent resume, but because I, I respect acting, in the way that I do, because I under I know what it's just like when people say, "Oh, my friend does comedy." I'm like, "No, he doesn't." No, right? he doesn't. <laughs> or, or, oh, my friend and I and I go, "Who's your friend?" And then they'll go, "Oh, he um he's so and so and so." I never heard of him because if I haven't heard of him, he probably doesn't do comedy. You know, like, <laughs> and and if you know, and even if I heard of him, he probably still doesn't do comedy half the time. But I, I think um, this, uh, so I, I, the only thing I would maybe push back on is like what you said is, yeah, what, what you said is the guy who is not intimidated by that is going to be the guy that's for you. 
I, I, you know, I say this to male comics, and I always, I hate to say it to female comics also, is because we're married to this. Like your husband is comedy, and your husband at some point in time, when you, if you get married, when you get married, is your side bitch, really. Because we are we are married to this thing that we this 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 thing of ours, you know. See, I would have said that two years ago. I'm in a whole different place with it. This pandemic, where I literally Dante, I haven't done stand up in a year. I just really? got back on stage two weeks two weeks ago. So I've done four spots in the last year, and four of those spots just happened. So mm -hmm. I took a whole year off. How come? A bunch of different reasons. I think part of it was the pandemic and the writing room. And then another part of it was just, I wanted to listen more. I feel like all I was doing was a bunch of talking and I just wanted to do, I just wanted to like learn and reflect and live life. I felt like my schedule was always determined by how many spots I had. And then I was doing all trying to fit all the other important shit in my life in between these windows that were inefficient. And so I just wanted to pull back and come back to stand up in a way that was healthier for me, in a way that had a better work life balance, one with boundaries. Like I'm not doing a shitty bar show. I'm only doing shows where they run on fucking time. You give me a spot time, I'm in and out. It's a guaranteed good crowd. I know what I'm doing when I'm up there. I got there's a money. Of, yep, there's money. I'm not doing no shows on Sunday because Sunday's my day to do laundry and do whatever the fuck I want to do and prepare for my week. And, and Sunday so shows suck. Let's be honest. Most of the time. <laughs> it depends. Like Sunday yeah. at the Nitty Factory was like a big, a big show. Um, and so obviously you can make little exceptions, but I just want to have a healthier relationship with work in general because I've been working every day for like the last 20 years. So mm. now I'm like, yeah, I'm a comedian. And yeah, I'm married to the game in that I'm always going to do comedy and I'm right. always going to want to be the best at that shit, but yeah. it's not always going to come first. Mm. I, but I, I also think it's, uh, and I don't know if I'm talking about, you know what? Let's in Dante. Huh? <laughs> I said, look at me having Dante stumped. <laughs> well, I, well, I'm thinking about that in terms of, because there's certain days that I don't work. I mean, I'm, I've been doing it 22 years. So there's certain days that I just don't work. Um, there's certain, like Sundays, usually I, 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 I do spend that time for myself and you, you have to do that. I don't do every spot. I, I mean, I've definitely adjusted, but I still grind. I still grind heavy. And the reason why I, grind, you know what? Let's, we're going to do a half hour on the Patreon and let's talk about this behind the scenes. Um, what do you got going on that you want to plug? Anything you want to plug? Your social media or anything? Yeah, just follow me on social. It's at overfab. So that's O V E R over and fab F A B because I'm fabulous. Dope. Dope. I don't even got no shows coming up. Look at that. I think yeah. I have one in November for the New York Comedy Festival. All right. Cool. Cool. Um, <laughs> Harry, talk to me quick. Uh, boss. All my social media stuff, you could go to at Harry Turjanian. And if you want relationship consultations, you could hit me up, uh, advicefromharry at gmail.com. Uh, and we can set up a time and go over rates. Uh, I can help you with your life, relationships, anything that needs uh, fixing. Uh, you know my social media. Google me, bitch. Um, it's on my. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, the consultations is uh, right there, right, right, right. Right there. There it is. <laughs> uh, Constantate DanteNarell.com. GYBB gets your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolutions being podcasted. Yo, I love y'all. Don't forget to sign up for the Patreon. Helps us to keep doing this. Love y'all. Check us on the other side on the Patreon side.